Okay, guys, I have to confess, Broketober has been awesome, but my wife, she's finally seeing the checking account balance. You know, with all the different releases coming out, we've got new processors, new graphics cards, new consoles, just with everything going on, we're going into Black Friday. You know, it's really hard to have enough cash in our pockets to get a brand new processor. But on the other hand, I've also seen a bunch of you guys' comments in our Zen 3 review, and you guys wanna see a little bit more detail when it comes to streaming performance. Now, it dawned on me, I can actually kill two birds with one stone in today's video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the value-oriented processors from the Zen 3 lineup, and we're gonna be looking at it more in depth with gaming and streaming performance. So guys, sit back and enjoy. I'm gonna probably save you guys some money. Hey guys, Turk here, hope you're having a great day. I've seen some of the Twitter drama going on lately between hardware unboxed and tech deals, and the conversation's been of revolving around, is it better to have fewer, faster cores or more slower cores? Now, I can argue for both instances here, but I was really curious if there was some like actual data we could get our hands on to hopefully guide you know, potential AMD builders on which processors to get. And since we're, it's Broketober and I'm running out of money, I think it's a good chance to take a look at the lower tiered offerings from AMD, the, primarily the 5600X. Now, if you haven't seen my Zen 3 review, I'll put a link up at the top right there. Uh, definitely hit pause and go check it out. I cover the 5900X as well as the 5800X and I cover the entire gamut of performance. But in today's video, we're gonna, we're gonna pinpoint in on the gaming performance and the streaming performance on two different processors that are both priced right at around 300 bucks. However, just as I said in the intro, I'm a little light on cash and, I just, and there's not a lot of stock in the market, so I can't just go out and buy a 5600X. But fortunately, we've got some innovations here and we can take our 5900X and mold it into a 5600X. To do that, we're gonna go into Precision Boost Overdrive. We're gonna disable an entire CCD off of our chip in order to have just six cores and 12 threads. Now, we're also gonna be limiting it from a thermal perspective as well as a power consumption perspective in order to hopefully maintain the boost clocks for our processor. Now, we don't have really complete control over the maximum boost clock speed, but with our 5600X here, we are able to get right around 4.7 gigahertz on the boost clock on extremely light workloads. But I was able to also go online and confirm some of my multi-core performance results and I am right at around 5% uh, within the margin of all those other results. And another way to look at it is this 5600X is gonna be running with Precision Boost Overdrive, giving it a few extra megahertz on the top end while still maintaining an active multi-core clock. Now, I do have a special treat for you guys. Thanks to AVGA trying to get a hold of all those bots buying the graphics cards, I finally got my notification and we've got our hands on the EVGA RTX 3080. This is the uh, XC3 uh, Ultra variant. So I'm gonna be taking all three of these processors today and I'm gonna be rerunning them through the entire suite. And I'm also gonna be expanding the different games we're testing as well as enhancing the detail that we're going in on our streaming results. And of course, our test bench is still using the MSI MPG X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. Got it on the first try. And we're gonna be running 30 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 CL16. Special thanks to Corsair's Dominator Platinums. These things are gorgeous. I won't be digging through the application or synthetic results too much in this video, so feel free to pause and absorb the goodness from my automated test suite. PC Mark and 3D Mark show some interesting results here where each processor takes wins in various tests. The 5900X nails the CPU performance for the most part, but the 8-core and 6-core offerings managed to stay relevant in most of the tests. As expected, moving to real-world workloads, applications that utilize more cores do end up favoring the older 8-core processor, though the 6-core 5600X manages to keep up with X265, Cinebench R20, and Geekbench. If you guys were curious about DaVinci Resolve, this benchmark does depend more on the GPU, so processor selection is less critical. However, Zen 3's impressive IPC increase keeps single-threaded results clearly in the 5900X and 5600X's win column. Now, let's get to it. Gaming. Zen 3 is arguably the best gaming processor on the market, but I do have some data here, guys, that's going to be making AMD put some asterisks on their marketing material. 
Call of Duty Modern Warfare's Piccadilly single player mission throws us an interesting opening curveball with our RTX 3080 actually preferring the 3700X at both 1080p and 1440p. The reason is unclear to me, but this could be due to code paths being optimized for the older Zen 2 architecture. Doom Eternal gets us back on track with the Zen 3 CPU surpassing the 3700X by over 30 FPS at 1080p, though increasing the resolution to 1440p brings us back to neck and neck performance. Ashes of the Singularity also prove that the Zen 3 is an excellent choice for gaming, favoring the fewer, faster cores. The 5600X's boost clock speed smoke the 3700X at 1080p and 1440p in F1 2020, upwards of 46 and 32 FPS respectively. GTA 5 shows a similar trend, though the gap is significantly tighter at both resolutions. And without repeating myself too much, Shadow of the Tomb Raider follows suit when looking at the reported average frame rate. But Red Dead Redemption 2 shifts the focus back to the GPU, and sure enough, all three processors perform the same at either resolution with the balanced detail setting. Now let's throw a brand new game into the benchmark suite, shall we? I finally picked up Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and in today's video, we're gonna look at the low, high, and ultra high detail settings. At 1080p, it would appear that the Ryzen 5000 series processors are the clear winner here, but they only are ahead by about six FPS. Increasing the resolution to 1440p effectively levels the playing field for each of the processors today. And that 1440p low result with the 5900X was repeatable, so don't go playing this game at low settings, okay? It just, it just looks terrible. With all that data on hand, it sure looks like it's gonna be a slam dunk for the 5600X, right? Well, you guys know me and I love to stream over at Twitch, and with talking to you guys on the Discord, turns out a lot of y'all like to stream on single PC streaming setups, so that begs the question, how do each of these valued processors run when it comes to single PC streaming. Before we get to the results, let's talk about the setup. Now, I'm gonna be running each of these games in a 1080p window on my high resolution monitor, and I'm gonna be using OBS Studio in order to do game capture sources in order to get the best performance from the software as possible. For encoding settings, I'm gonna be sweeping from about 1000 kbps on the bitrate all the way up to 8000 kbps. In order to expedite my testing, I am only gonna be doing a rescaled 720p output, and I'm gonna be sticking to the X264 slow encoder setting. Now, you guys might be like, Turk, why are you doing that? The reason for that is if you're running an RTX 2000 series graphics card or newer, chances are you have access to the newest NVENC encoder, which is arguably equivalent when it comes to uh, about X264 medium on the presets. Now, but with going with X264 slow, we're gonna be able to get even better detail from our stream, especially at lower bit rates. Now, if you guys need more information about streaming, bit rates, quality presets, and all that stuff, I definitely recommend you guys go check out the Stream Professor over at Epos Vox. I'll put a link up at the top right and put it down in the below. Uh, he goes into a lot more detail, and it's definitely worth reading up if you're interested in this kind of material. But let's check out the streaming performance on these value processors. Starting with GTA 5, our CPU-centric test sees consistent frame rate decreases across the processors today. The 5600X manages to provide a decent streaming experience up to a bitrate of 6000 kbps. The 3700X fares much better, but at a lower output frame rate. Call of Duty is running the same map as before, and our 5900X stands as our control in this experiment. It doesn't break a sweat at any of the levels tested today. However, our once proud 5600X fails at X264 slow at our entry point 2000 kbps while our older 8 core processor manages to hang on all the way up to around 5000 kbps. Doom Eternal is even worse news for both of these value processors today with even the 3700X choking out at around 3000 kbps. This game will require significantly more CPU horsepower or your choice of either X264 medium or NVENC encoding. F1 2020 is where we start to see some really exciting results. Our 5600X manages to run smoothly up to about a bitrate of 4000 kbps, but we do begin to drop frames with more data. Also, the average FPS drops is significantly more than our older 3700X. 
Speaking of the 3700X, it does not encounter any processing overload at any of the settings today, a definitive win for the older processor. Now, do you wanna see what some of the different detail levels look like? All right, let's use the 5900X here to compare the quality. Switching to 1080p scaled output just for these recordings, the 5900X manages to record smoothly up to an impressive 20,000 bitrate. As we increase the bitrate, we do see a steady drop in frames per second as our resources are diverted from the game to OBS. Shadow the Tomb Raider sees similar frame drops for the 5600X when moving up to 6000 kbps, and interestingly here, our 5900X's lead drops as we engage more cores. Red Dead Redemption 2 shows similar trends, though OBS starts to starve the 3700X, which doesn't manage to output 8000 kbps. Again, the 5600X just doesn't fare well here. Now let's finish up our streaming results today with the Valhalla built-in benchmark. Again, this GPU dominated game manages to level the playing field and the 5600X fails to keep up above X264 slow at 4000 kbps. This shows that as next generation games continue to leverage the GPU, CPU boost performance is less significant on single PC setups. With all that information in hand, I do have three recommendations for those that are wanting to build an AMD based rig. Now, if all you're gonna be doing with your PC is gaming, the 5600X is a solid recommendation and we're getting pretty much the exact same gaming performance at, compared to processors that are over double the cost of the 5600X. Of course, if you can get your hands on the part. Now, if cost is not your concern, the 5900X is the clear all around best processor here and all of the different metrics we've tested today from content creation, gaming, it's gonna last you for several years going forward. Now, if you're on a budget and you're wanting to dip your toes into content creation, be it streaming or encoding or any of that other stuff, I really do think the 3700X is still a competent processor even here in 2020. Heck, any of the Zen 2 based processors are a great buy, especially if you can get it on sale or on any of the Black Friday deals. For the 3700X specifically, we're able to get much better multi-core performance compared to the other $300 offering, and we only sacrifice just a little bit when it comes to single threaded performance. Gaming performance, I would say, is even on par as long as you've got a good enough graphics card. And the cherry on top, if you're gonna be streaming and using the X264 encoding, having access to extra cores is just going to up the quality of your streams, especially if you're limited on your bit rates, and it's almost equal to the 5900X. However, if streaming quality isn't that much of a concern for you guys, picking up an RTX 2000 series graphics card or newer might be a great option for you, especially if you're gonna be playing a lot of faster paced games. There you go guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Collecting all the data for this video has taken me a long time, so make sure you guys hit the follow button. This isn't Twitch. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. That way you know when I'm posting new content. We still got the Icy Dog video that's on schedule for next week. We've also got our hands on a PlayStation 5, and we're going to be validating some of our predictions that we made earlier in the year. Hit the follow button over at Twitch as well. I'll be streaming a lot of this tech stuff live as well. But thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you all have a great night. Take care, Turk Force.